I had not been back there in years, but it was the last place left to look. Those lost wishes weren't the treasure I was after. It was not exactly as I remembered it, but it wasn't all that different either. Contraptions guarded the lost treasure. I would have to turn one and see what happened. I decided this was no time to take a nap, even though that bed looked very squishy and very comfortable. I decided this was no time to take a nap, even though that bed looked very squishy and very comfortable. And that's what would have happened if I turned the left switch. But since I am here telling this story, you already know that I pulled the right one. Even though the bed was very comfortable, this was no time to hide under the covers. As I was saying, <clears throat> this was no time to take a nap. All right, I took a brief rest before I decided to adventure on with that very important treasure. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, Grandpa. I don't remember this part of the story. Beds hanging from stalactites? We'll get there, Gwendolyn. No worry. No detail in this story will be overlooked. Now, where was I? Ah, yes. As I treaded through the river of rumbling trundles, I feared I knew the source of that deafening wind. Beneath a slumbering pile of teeth and claws was... Fabled Mirror! Oh, so you remember this part of the story. Well, dragons are my favorite. Do you want to tell this part? Yes! King Edward sent me, the greatest knight in all of Daventry, on a quest to return his stolen mirror. A gigantic, hulking beast of a dragon was the last thing in my way to... In my way to... <laughs> my way to... Add a shinier hat to my collection.
I tried to turn that crazy contraption, but it was missing a handle. Someone tampered with it, creating some silly conundrum. Volumes of old books with foreboding titles clutter the shelves of that strange bedroom. How to Tame a Dragon, Breaking the Spirit of Hideous Beasts, Amateur Spells to Impress Your Friends With, <laughs> No Books About... So, the missing handle was booby-trapped? What did you do? Well, I used my cleverness to outsmart the trap. Then I used my cleverness to hide. Luckily, that half-blinded beast never noticed me in bed. A dragon's eye must be really hard to pierce with an arrow. At archery lessons, I can barely hit a hay bale. It is indeed a, a feat only for skilled archers. I tried to turn that crazy contraption, but it was missing a handle. Someone tampered with it, creating some silly conundrum. What did you use to fix the broken switch? Dragon's chains were coiled around a gigantic switch mounted to the cave wall. This cave seemed to be filled with failed adventures. After he briefly basked in the sun, the narcoleptic dragon went back to snoring. I'd probably sleep all day too, if Amira was my only friend. right into a ferocious dragon's mouth. I was just making sure he was still paying attention.
Whoever designed this trap thought they were pretty clever, but I would probably find a way to hit that unbreachable switch. Mira called out to me. A ridiculous feeding contraption was cobbled together to keep the beast, and probably its owner, alive.
escaped with only a flesh wound. Let me guess, you escaped with only a flesh wound. With a magic mirror safely in my possession, I dreamt of a daventry I would be rewarded with, and the kingdom it could become. I had three choices in front of me. Any would clear my path to safety, and all would have rippling consequences. My arms could barely grip the rope, but with the last of my strength, I climbed out of the well and headed back to the castle. Ever since the magic mirror returned, its reflections have warned the kingdom of danger, kept our family safe, and it has exposed many troublesome crumbs tangled in my beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. King Edward was so proud that you returned his lost treasure that he made you king. Everyone knows that part. Now, can we get back to that dragon? Gwendolyn, there is so much more to my stories than dragons. 
I hope this old cap will be remembered for far more than the action tattered across its brim, sewn into the seams of many hidden adventures. All right, let's get back to the dragon. Tell me everything. Like, why did you set the dragon free even though he was trying to eat you? I set him free because, well, over the years I realized that the dragon was not the despicable, hideous beast Daventry had made him out to be. He was just a caged animal that was never shown any kindness. On that day, I forgave the dragon for his atrocious past. You have such a bizarre way of making friends, Grandpa. I guess I do, too. I'm known as Gwendolyn the Popular back home, but only to my stuffed bunnies. I've always found it best to pursue friends where I can, though they don't always feel the same about me. All right, you two. Grandpa needs to rest. Gwendolyn, it's way past your bedtime. Sleep well, Grandpa. I'll be back first thing in the morning. I don't need rest. I'm as spry as I've ever been, though I wouldn't mind a slice of magic fruit. Hello, cousin. Guard! <laughs> I'm glad you're finally here. He's been asking about you for days. I had to sit through the same story five times. We got here as fast as we could. And I like Grandpa stories, especially the ones with dragons. Ah, oh, yes, the legendary beast that he set free. I don't know if he forgets I've heard that story before or he doesn't care, but he loves telling it to anyone that will listen. I'm pretty sure I heard the nursemaids telling his same jokes in the hall. Have you heard anything the doctors are saying? Yes. Doctors, wizards, magic elves. Grandfather is fine, Gwendolyn. They all say the same thing. He's just old. He still has a few good years left. Look, we're all excited that your family made the trip, but there's no need to worry. You should get some rest. I'm sure you're scheduled for a full morning of Grandfather's hilarious ramblings. Oh, I'm also scheduled for the tournament tomorrow. Ah, oh, yes, the fencing tournament. You'll love it. I'm, of course, favored to win and will make sure you have the very best seat to view my victory. The courtyard will be filled with important people and delicious hors d'oeuvres. Oh, um, I'm actually competing in the tournament. Hmm. I had no idea we were hosting a junior tournament. That's incredible. In that case, I will gladly be there to cheer you on and eat delectable appetizers. Nope. No junior tournament. I'll be squaring off against you. I see. Well, perhaps this is the time to stop listening to stories and finally make some of your own. Good night, Gwendolyn. Sleep well. Come in, Gwendolyn. You can set those on the nightstand. Grandma said to take three spoonfuls of each. I'll get to those. No need to fuss over me. Now let's talk about far more important issues, like that fencing tournament. I hear you're competing. Well, I signed up, but I'm not so sure anymore. Nonsense. If it's Gart you're worried about, he's no bother. After all, I only learned that you entered after he complained about it all morning. Threatened, I'm guessing. There are many ways to win a duel. I, for one, have always been fond of...
treating my opponents with respect. You'll be surprised what opens up to you. A lovely fellow once told me the fastest way to anyone's heart is through their stomach. <clears throat> Speaking of, that reminds me of a story, one I know you haven't heard before. When I was a much younger lad, before I was a knight, before I'd been to Daventry, and even before I'd seen a dragon. It's a tale about a tournament that changed my life. It is a long story, but I shall tell it briefly. Well, Triumph, this looks as good a place as any to camp for the night. Let's rest up. We have a big day tomorrow. After gracefully repelling down the cliff, I welcomed the sight of an actual road, the first sign of civilization. <laughs> <laughs> 